Now, as my next guest starred in so many of our favourite TV comedies, from the young ones to bottom uh, and everything else, uh, now Aid Edmondson's appearing in a more, what I say, family-friendly show, voicing Mr Toad in a brand Another new Toad? Uh, yeah, from the Toad. Yeah. Uh, the Wind in the Willows. Let's take a look. There once was a fellow called Toad who drove the best car on the road. He drove at high speed with great skill indeed and never for one second slowed. Oh, gosh. How much trouble could one toad cause? <laughs> toad! I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, it could actually just be your life getting into trouble. Yeah. Uh, it's a fantastic show. Welcome, Aid. Lovely well, to see you, you very this much. morning. Um, I was listening to your, I was listening to the audio version of your book that you've got out, Berserk, yeah. which is your autobiography, and uh, I was just saying to you then that the sort of the, the voice of Toad is quite similar he's to the way slightly you... elevated. He's slightly, slightly he's, elevated. He's slightly posher, but he's he's as he's as stupid and as over enthusiastic, and as. Uh, well, I'm, I don't think I'm selfish and lazy, but but he is, and and that's a character trait that that we used to write, Rick and I. Yeah. Uh, especially into Rick's characters. Yeah, it's so it's so, so funny to listen to it. But also, what I loved is that in your book you say, you know, uh, you gave 100, 150 percent is your yeah, greatest. Yeah. That's I what you give. You always give 150 yeah. percent, and you can hear that in the voiceover. Toad is like full on gusto. Yeah. He is a hundred and fifty percent person. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's a that's a very good kind of. I'm I'm going to use that in future. I like that. I like that. Um, why why did you agree to do it? Because it's obviously so nostalgic for all of us. I, I read it as a kid and um, enjoyed it then, but I enjoyed it even more when I read it to my own kids. I'm talking 30 years ago. Yeah. And uh, I thought at the time, blimey, I'm a good toad. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know, get a book and you're reading it to your kids and you, and you know, it works. And you sort of really get into you think, it oh, yourself. I, think I know how to do this one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you just keep looking for the toad to come back. And you've got grandchildren now. I have, yeah. Are they of the age to appreciate you being in Toad? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, the youngest one's two and the oldest one's uh, 11. I've got five of them. Oh, fantastic. And, um, so uh, a few of them will sort of snag that, I think. Yeah, that's so lovely. It's yeah. so lovely. And, of course, you're, as I was saying, I, you've, got your, your, you've got your autobiography has just come out in paperback. Yeah. Um, it is a really fantastic sort of I, I can't expect I feel emotional when I talk about it because oh, that's very kind because of you. You, you I listen to the audiobook and it's very different to reading it yeah. in that it's your voice um but there's so much um heart in it all the way through and you're self-deprecating and you're very um you undercut yourself all the time. You're like, I'm trying my best. Well, I'm not very confident. <laughs> and I think that that's so interesting. With someone with such an illustrious career, you've achieved so much. There's always a sense in the book that you're slightly unsure of whether this is going to be the last thing you do or whether this is the best thing you're going to do. I don't know anyone who isn't winging it. Yeah. You would probably include it. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's true. Don't you feel? It's I think true. most people are winging it. Yeah. Especially in the kind of modern world. No one gets a job for life anymore. You no. Kind of, you kind of always sort of... Wondering what you can sell now of yourself. Yes, you know. exactly. It's, it's a weird thing being, being and it's, in this business. Yeah, and it's really lovely because at the beginning of the book, you talk about um, how actually, as a, you talk through all your childhood at boarding school and and the difficulties you've had with your parents and that relationship. Yeah. Um, but you also talk very much at the beginning about two things about your identity. Yeah. One is your name, yeah. Adrian. Adrian. Uh, a girl's name. Which was you were taught. <laughs> My as a dad girl, was then. a teacher, and uh, we used to. He used to teach forces kids and we, we lived all around the world and I used to change school every year. Mm. Whenever I turned up, they'd say, what's your name? And say, Adrian. Say, oh, Adrian, yeah, it sounds like a girl's name, you must be a girl. But that's because of Rocky, the film, right? Because I no, think No, the Adrian. first one was Adrian Street, the wrestler. Oh, Do you know, I remember no. the 60s when wrestling was really big on Saturday afternoons on ITV. Yeah, uh, well, that the, quite there, was this, there was this wrestler called Adrian Street who had kind of ponytail oh. and eyeshadow and glitter. And he, he used to pin his opponents to the floor and then kiss them <laughs> and, until they until they gave <laughs> until in. Until they gave in. So that, that became Adrian. And then when I got to uni, yeah. Rocky came out. Rocky and, came out uh, then. His girlfriend was called Adrian. So, so, so that the, the, the whole last scene where he's being beaten to a pulp in the ring and then he's shouting, Adrian, Adrian. <laughs> and you're like, not again. It's how I used to get called at university. That, that's how everyone pronounced my name. Adrian. 
And the link between you trying to actually change your name when you wanted to get your equity yeah. card to become an official actor, and then years later, in Ab Fab, you're... Well, it's not too... We, we were doing the first thing we ever did on telly, me and Rick. It was some kind of magazine programme. I think it was called Friday Night, Saturday Morning. And uh, I hadn't got an equity card at the time, so this was a way of getting one. And you can change your... Your professional name doesn't have to be your real name. So we were playing around, Rick and I decided we'd call that Ed Munson makes Eddie Monsoon. Eddie Monsoon. So, so we kind of made Eddie Monsoon. This sounded like a better name. Adrian Edmondson. It's too many right. s sounds and syllables. Um, so I thought that was great. And I went in and I said to the production assistant, uh, I've decided on my name. Uh, it's Eddie Monsoon. She said, it isn't. It's Adrian Edmondson because I've already sent the form in. <laughs> right. Uh, so um, I then wrote a character called Eddie Monsoon. He's in a comic strip um, episode. Uh, but Jennifer then took it on more famously. Uh, Isn't that a fantastic? Called Eddie Monsoon, Edwina Monsoon, but she's Eddie always called lives Ed on. Eddie, Eddie lives on. I think on. Eddie Monsoon has had a better life and career without me. Yeah, oh, it's <laughs> funny. And the, one of the other things that's really made me laugh in it is that your obsession uh, for a very, very num many number of years that you must have Scandinavian in you. I went to school in East Yorkshire, near York, and, you know, it's the centre of the Viking... Yes, uh, Dane of course. Law and everything yeah. like that. And um, my name's Edmondson, which has got a kind of Scandi thing. So I'd kind of, you know, I'd kind of built built up for myself this idea that, you know, we landed You've a thousand a years ago and I was a Viking. Yeah. And it was all going swimmingly until uh, the DNA test thing came out. And then I, re I found out that I was only 10%. Can I and write... Jennifer yeah, go on. is nearly 40%. Wow. Well, and can I... She thought she was Scottish. Can I add insult to injury? Yeah. I did my DNA about in 2017. Yeah. I'm 12.5% Scandinavian, according Are you? to me. You're more <laughs> Look of a, at me. You're more of a Isn't Viking than I am. <laughs> it's yeah. so strange. And listen, I want to know about your... We haven't got much time left, but I want to yeah. know about your vegetable growing. Because I believe... Is it true that you've won more I've awards won for your prizes. vegetables? I've won more prizes for vegetables than I have for comedy. It's hilarious. Yeah. Tell me why. Uh, uh, because I'm very good at cucumbers. Who knew? I'll tell you what, my second one was for an uh, unspecified vegetable. Uh, What's that then? I mean, unspecified. What <laughs> I know, does that it mean? Sounds, sounds weird. Some sort it? of weird Frankenstein hybrid. No, it's when they have a kind of list of all the vegetable classes you can apply for. And if you, you haven't got one of those, you can put it in unspecified. So I've won <laughs> third prize from the spring onion. Look at you, still winning awards <laughs> yeah. for random stuff, yeah. which is what we love. <laughs> now, listen, Toad and Friends is out on Boomerang on Monday. Your book in paperback is out now. The audiobook is there. It is such a fantastic listen, oh, I have to say. I loved kind of it. Say, I shed a few tears this morning. I won't explain why, but... And it made me laugh, so it did everything. Oh, so good. thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure to meet Cheers. you. Cheers. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, great to see you. Uh, now...